sit through this, coming out on the work night, you know what I mean, to en enjoy this hard work that my man Gary Gray, uh, who's, you know, we've been doing this, man, forever. You know, he, he directed me in my first, like, big video, It Was a Good Day, uh, and uh, then we went on to do the movie Friday together, and, you know, 20 years later, we, we come together to put together this masterpiece called Straight Outta Compton. And uh, I just, I'm just i just glad y'all liked it. I heard y'all clapping at the end. It was a beautiful thing. I'm just going to tell you right now, what an incredible film just to see the entire thing come together. So how many old school people we got in here? Okay. To live through this music, me being a Miami boy, and seeing this come together on a screen, Q, you have no idea. When they called me and he said, Laz, we want you to host this thing, I said, yo, it would be absolutely my honor and my privilege to be out here. This is an incredible, incredible, incredible night, an incredible film. This is going to break records, and I'm going to tell you why. Because it's real shit. That's the truth. Okay? Yo, your son? Give me goosebumps, dog. Man, me too. Straight up, too, man. Yeah. How did you know, Q? How did you know? I mean, besides the fact that, you know, he's a kid. But let's just face it, not, not all of them are cut out to be this. I got a bunch. I'm good. Yo, to see your son on the screen playing you. Man, incredible. Tell us. I'm, I'm as proud as you can be. Uh, you know, as a parent, you know, and all parents uh, attest to this, you just love when your kids step up. You know what I mean? When you do what, what, what you, when they do what you taught them, when, uh, when, when they step up at the moment of truth and, uh, and show you what they made of. And, you know, my son, I, I knew he could do it. I knew he had the talent deep down inside of him. But he put in the work, and that's what I'm so proud of. You know, the coach's son always get it the hardest. So we put him through the ringer. You know what I'm saying? Yes, we did. I, I didn't want to make it no charity case. I told him that I'm not, I can't give it to you. You know, you have to earn it, and you have to beat out everybody else. And, you know, you sh I know what you made of. You my son. I know you can do it. I can attest to that. We um, it took how long did how long did it take for you? Could you please let them know? First of all, what I put you through, and and, and what it took to get this role. Um, two years, uh, two years of auditions, two years of going back to Gary. Uh, what can I work on? You know, give me some homework. Uh, two years of having three different acting coaches, going to New York, staying in New York for a week with a coach. And uh, finally ended with a screen test where there were two other cubes there. I mean, I'm just saying that there's two other cubes there. They took L's. But, you know. <laughs> but after, you know, after all the hard work and, and dedication and sacrifice, Universal picked the right man for the job. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. I everybody's character came to life. It was like crazy. Watching you play Easy e was like, dang. You know what I'm saying? You, hey, you owned it. Straight up. This is, you know, NWA is legacy. You know what I'm saying? NWA broke grounds that people it, it, if it wasn't for NWA, a lot of rapping wouldn't have happened. You got what I'm saying? A lot of entertainment. A hundred percent. That wouldn't right. have happened. A lot of movies wouldn't have happened. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> There's no Friday, no Boys in the Hood, yeah. no Italian job. So I can go on and on and on. Yeah, man. It's like if 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 I don't write Boys in the Hood, we don't shoot the movie Boys in the Hood. So it's just uh, this movie is the origin for a lot of entertainment, for a lot of people that, that come off the NWA family tree, you know what I mean? And, and you know, NWA deserves a movie like this, you know what I mean? For the talent that was in that group, for the courage that, that the group had uh, to just be ourselves. You know, we didn't call it gangster rap back then, we called it reality rap. Right. And, uh, you know, we, just was speaking what we thought was the real 
and what was the truth as we saw it and try to make it entertaining and, and make it into music. So, you know, we took a negative and made a positive, you know, and we, we was constructive and not destructive and, uh, and made a big statement and a big stand. You know, I think people actually, yeah, he deserves a poem for that because I think people really underestimate the choices you had. You grew up in South Central, which is just like Compton, next to Compton, and everybody around us, it was, they picked up guns, there was a lot of violence, and instead of picking up a gun, you picked up a mic, and people don't realize that there was a choice there, and this was a form of entertainment, it was a form of creativity, but it was also a form of non-violent protest. Speak to that a little bit. Well, you know, the group, we, we spoke on many different things, you know, but, you know, we thought our only weapon was our music. You know, we thought we were so backed into a corner. We thought nobody cared about our situation. And for us, you know, we decided to, to do something constructive and make music and be creative and not be destructive and, uh, you know, handle it a different way. So. You know, it's a lot to be said about that. Um, you know, it, it, it's a lot of talent in the hood, you know what I mean? And, you know, sometimes if we just be creative and, and you know, you never know what the outcome is gonna be. You know, everything that you see and everything that you've seen all started with a pen and a pad. And at the end of the day, you gotta want it. You don't think nothing's gonna be handed to you. You gotta go out there and get it. No doubt. Without a doubt. Gary, I got a question for you. Yes. When you were putting this together, um, how did you know that these two were the right ones for this movie? You know, first of all, it was really, it was a hard, <laughs> it was just a hard process. You know, I had someone actually tell me I shouldn't do the movie. They said, there were so many ways you can get it wrong that can end your career. They said, it's too important of a story. You know, I work with Jamie Foxx, I work with John Travolta, I work with big stars. But if you do this movie, you can't put a star in that role. I mean, if you watch T.I. play Ice Cube, that's kind of weird, right? <laughs> and I'm not, not taking anything away from that, but it had to feel authentic. So I had to step out and use new people. And so while we wanted to create a world like that that was authentic. It also came with um, picking people who didn't have a lot of experience. So I had to go for the heart and say, who makes me feel like they can serve this story and then bring the heart and the grit and the performance to a movie? And when Jason auditioned yes. <laughs> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of actors later, I saw him on video and I said, that's easy e Wow. I said, that's easy e and it was on a computer screen. Then I said, okay, that might just be luck. Let me have you, let me call you back. Let me see if you can do it again. If you can do it again, that's my man. So what happened? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, like you said, after I sent my first video off, it had been maybe roughly, what, three weeks? I'm like that. Yeah, I waited like three weeks for the call back. So, you know, in my mind, I'm like, I didn't even get it. You know, I put my life on the line for it, but it's real. You know what I'm saying? And you're in New Orleans, right? right. You're not I'm in Los Angeles. Angeles. Right, I'm from New Orleans. So, I, you know, I went down there and I put it on tape, you know, with this lady named Megan Lewis, sent it off, and I felt good about it. You know, everybody felt good about it, but it felt like it was taking forever, you know? Yeah. And then one day they hit me and they're like, hey, Jason, you want to fly? you know, to Los Angeles for a callback. And I'm like, ah, callback. <laughs> I don't know, can't you still like not get the role on the callback? They're like, yeah, and I'm like, I don't know. So they're like, well, let's try to see what we can figure out. So they call me back like 30 minutes later, and they like, man, Gary love you. They won't Skype it. So I'm like, all right, you know, so I went, you know, set up my list. It was difficult from the start. I'm yeah. <laughs> set up my <laughs> Skype yeah. situation. And we Skyped for an hour and 17 minutes. I ain't even gonna play like I don't remember it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and and we blew us away. <laughs> for real, you can't say, I know you can't say it. You're trying to be modest. But he blew us away. I've never cast a role solely on video. Because look how big this screen is. I can't, you, got, you have to have 
little nuances and performances and things like that. There's things that you can't see on the small screen that you're gonna see on the big screen. And so the power that you brought to that callback and that audition, it just came through the screen that I knew you were meant. Well, I mean, I just want everybody to feel the fact that, you know, I felt like I could taste it. You know what I'm saying? And you know how it is. Like, I'm from the hood, hood. Not the fake hood. I'm from the real hood. I'm a real Holly Grove representative. I still got an address back there, you know? So I'm like, when you get that close to, to breaking, you know what I mean? Like, look where I'm at now. How can I stay on my couch? You know what I'm saying? And I just, you know, I was in full pit mode. You know what I mean? I, I had my teeth showing that day. And, you know, I brought it home. You did it there. That's part of the reason why I hired you, too, because one of the mo most important things to me, well, the most important thing was performance first. I don't care what you look like. I mean, you have to be somewhere, you have to be black at least, but, <laughs> but it's performance first because after the novelty of someone looking like the character, you have to carry an entire movie. So I said performance first, so you had the performance, but then I said, you know what? This is content. You have to have street credibility because this man's going to watch it and go, I don't know. Boy, yeah, right? <laughs> he, he looked like him, but I don't believe him as easy E. So your background really helped you. Right. And your focus put you over. And the fact that you, you know, you resemble easy, but you actually turned into him is based on your acting choices, and that's the reason why we pitch you. That's what's up. Jason, question for you. Listen. Have you ever acted prior to this? Film? I have. I have, I have. On the low, it, uh, you know, I've been out here for like five years, you know, right. doing my little thing, you know. But it wasn't nothing that really paid my bills. It's a, it's a waiting game. It's hurry up and wait, you know, in the acting world. And when I finally got my chance to take a swing at a lead role, ha 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 right. Yeah. Oh, Shane, let me ask you a question, homie. To fill your morning. dad's shoes, you know what I'm saying? That's Ice Cube, dog. I mean, I don't know if you guys realize, but Ice Cube is sitting in front of you right now. For real. That's real talk. Okay? That is real talk. What went through your mind when Dad was like pushing you and pushing you and pushing you to be him? Um, the role really became an obsession for me because I couldn't sit in the theater and see somebody portraying my father and me not thinking it's up to par or feeling like I could have did it better. So at a certain point, you know, I know the movie is about NWA, but this movie is about my family, you know? It's about my family's legacy and what other fuel do you need to, to build a fire, you know? So it was about pushing myself to make sure that you know, the legacy of my family is done correctly because these films, these films last forever, especially something like this, you know? So I wanted to make sure that the ball was in my hand. And can I ask something to add, please? Because when we announced that we hired Shay for the part of Ice Cube, we heard a little rumblings like, oh yeah, of course you did, it's a little nepotism. You hired his son, of course it was easy. We put him through so much and he took it with a smile. You know, sometimes when you have celebrities and they have their kids, they grew up a certain way, you know, they feel entitled. Man, this guy came in, he was in the gym, he recorded the songs, he did everything with a smile, with a great attitude, he's a great person, man. I want to dispel any rumors about nepotism because he worked harder than anybody to get this role. Hell yeah. <laughs> I appreciate that, dude. You know what I loved about the film, too? It's authenticity. Watching Dre do, you know, the whole turntable scratching thing with It's Time and all the music playing. And the, come, I'm an old school DJ. Yes, sir. Bro. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? When I saw him doing it, It's Time. Chicka, 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 chicka. It's Time. I'm like, Can I speak to that real quick? Yo, please. Yeah, because my man Shay here, he did, he did have to do a lot of work. You know, I had to put on, well, how, how much you, how much you, 1,200 a day? I had to get 1,200 calories a day. Okay. Lost 15 pounds in 22 days. Damn. Ouch. Ouch. Yeah, and I had to, I had to get bigger. I had to eat like 4,000 calories a day. Wait, 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 wait. 1,200. 
Pull this out. Wait a minute, man. Y'all stop the It's Time speech. We're talking about your damn diet. We're talking about your damn diet. Talking about It's Time, baby. Like, my, man, no, but what about around, my man Corey not here right now, but he went this. so hard on them turntables yeah. every day until he got that. You know what I mean? Shout out to my man Dub C too. He put us through the ring with it. He put us through the ring with it. But you know, my man stepped up and he he did that for real. You yes, know so yeah. Hey, being, being a, a Miami boy and being on the radio out here for years, you know what I loved. How many references y'all made about Miami in the movie? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Miami is popular. Everybody trying to get to Miami, man. <laughs> For real. Everybody. And Seriously. we made it. Yeah, yeah. We made know. it. You made it in a special <laughs> way, my friend. Oh, yeah. A very special way. Um, we're going to open up uh, some questions from the crowd here in a second, okay? Just uh, give me some, a couple of minutes to get yourself ready. But... At the end of the day, dude, you guys not only did this movie justice, but for the new generation, the kids that didn't live through this, they are getting a history lesson. They are getting an absolute history lesson. Like, oh, nah, 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 nah. no, don't they start it here. <laughs> this is what it's all about. And it shows, I, I love how the movie goes all over the place show some raw emotion mm -hmm. in the movie as well, because guess what? You can be the biggest, baddest mofo out there, but you got a heart. You know what I'm saying? And it shows heart in this movie. So you guys outdid yourselves with this film. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Miami. Give it up for everybody that's on this stage right here. We're good. We have y'all back, man. We have y'all back. <laughs> I think I got a gentleman over here with a question. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, first of all, props to Shea and Jason, man. Strong performances. Woo! And like they were saying before, man, you had a lot on you to fill up those shoes. Mm -hmm. Man, good job. Thank uh, you. I appreciate that. Just to ask Gary Gray, uh, you know, you can tell when you see performance from actors, man, of what your role is in bringing performance, natural, good, strong performance. It was there. Congratulations to you. Thank you. Thank you. My question. You and congratulations for all your success over the years. Man, you made some bold choices. My big question for you is, is do you have any like clear apparent like regret? You know, where you look back and you're like, damn, I should have turned the other way. I mean, you made another move, man, because you made a lot of bold moves, and I'm just wondering if there was any regrets for you. No, you know, before I you know, before I do anything, you know, it's it's well thought out. And, um, you know, I don't regret anything. Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't be here. You know, I don't think I would have blossomed as a solo artist uh, and, and, and gone on to do all the things that I've done in entertainment if I stayed with the group. You know, so I don't, I don't have any, you know, regrets. You know, everything I've done is like a time capsule. You know what I mean? If you want to know what was on my mind in 89, pick up straight out of Compton, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, these are these are just uh, moments in time. You know, these are just, you know, it's lightning in a bottle. It's uh, it's just a slice of life. And, you know, so I have I have uh, no regrets. You know, definitely none I'm gonna speak on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, I think I got my man Tony Neal, is that you? Yeah, yeah. What up, Tony? Tony Neal in the building. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, well, I think we're all most in part. I sat there and I remember the whole shit when he went to New York. And I remember the whole shit. I, you know, I, that's, that's my family. You understand me? So, and I also want to thank you for putting me in that barbershop movie. Oh, man. No problem, man. No problem, man. I got you, man. Baby. Can't talk about our little, you know, behind the scenes <laughs> thing, man. We got people listening, man. <laughs> Oh man, thank you. Great, thank you. great portrayal of Earth on Air, man. I just, it just brought back so much. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, 
had to get out and walk out and get out my feelings for a minute. You know That's right. We like that, though. I mean, he knew Easy E, you know what I mean? Uh, so, you know, to, to, to hear an OG like you, you know, uh, feel it like that. I know we did our things. This this dude right here is raising his hand so high. What's your question, bro? The movie was excellent. Thank you. That's right. I still like fucking Okay. Okay, let me repeat that. He's a cop and he still likes fuck the police. That means the song was great and the movie did well. The movie was good. Go ahead. I just want to know if it's real that um that they beat things up in the high school and I'll beat people for people that he wants to know if it was real that they piece they 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 try to come together at the end to make things work. Yeah, you know, uh I saw him in, in New York at a club called the Tunnel. And uh, he was there with all thugs and harmony, and we had our, you know, we had our issues. So, you know, I didn't know if it was gonna be beef. And then he asked, "Yo, can I come talk to you?" And when he sat down, we just we dropped all the hatchets. You know, it was just family again. It wasn't. We didn't talk about contracts or nothing like that. It was just two friends, you know, catching up and uh, missing each other and. Uh, talking about the future and what can we do together. And at the time, he was in a, a big time uh, feud with Dre, but he said, Yo, you know, I, I love y'all, man. I'm, I'm gonna work this out with Dre, and then we're gonna get back in the studio. And, and unfortunately, he, he passed away before, before we could do that, you know. But we wanted to show in the movie that, as brothers, we was trying to get back together. It's a brother back there in the corner with your hand, I mean, up at top. Yeah, with your hand up, go ahead. Oh, that's a sunset. What's that? I got on those damn glasses. We got on sunglasses. I'm trying to be cool and shit. I can't see. <laughs> go ahead. <coughs> Well, you know, it's like, before we did that song, Fuck the Police, you know, it was, a, it was a thing where, you know, cops could do no wrong. You know, it's like, if you ever went to court and the cops said something about you, it was just law, you know, it's just, you're going to jail. You know, there's no repercussions. You can't, everybody believed them. And what we gotta realize is that, you know, everybody's a real person. They make mistakes, you know what I mean? Everybody step over the line sometimes, you know what I mean? Citizens do it, cops do it. So with NWA, we started shedding light on not the good cops, but the bad cops, the ones that, that do all this harm to our community. And then from then on, you know, this Rodney King video comes out a few years later that really showed what we were talking about because video cameras uh, video cameras was, uh, we, you know, was starting to be used by the public. So we was able to capture this and, and now we're doing it more and more and more and more and more. You know, my man Gary Gray said, yo, we should really push to get body cameras on, on uh, law enforcement, you know, because when you put, when you put body cameras on law enforcement, the, the complaints go down. You know what I mean? Because everybody's held accountable. So if we're held accountable as citizens, we gotta hold them even more accountable as public officials. So I think we just gotta fight in the right manner to get real change made. That's right. Yeah. All right, so I got a lady with a question right here. Stand up, stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, first of all, I wanted to tell all of you it's a great movie thank you for making you. it not only because it was a great movie but I think it's an important movie as well I started listening to NWA when I was in college or yeah in college no actually. way <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it's important partly because I'm I was my son's age when I started listening to it. I'm here with my son and I think it's important that today's youth see a movie like this because I see rap and hip hop as is a narrative. It's a story. It tells a story. 
and I'm kind of following up on, on her question, NWA had a positive message, just like uh, Ice Cube was just saying. So I'd kind of like to know, Ice Cube, if you had to say something to today's youth who is listening to the rap and the hip hop coming out today, if you have a comment on that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I don't want to misconstrue in WA. Everything we said wasn't a positive message, you know, but everything was an honest message and everything was real to us. And at the time, everybody wasn't doing it. So it was new uh, and it was fresh and it was different. You know, what I would say to today's youth is, you know, be creative, use your talent. You know, you never know where it's going to get you. You know, with the frustrations of the world and the ills that you feel, you know, somehow, you know, write it down. You know, you never know. Anything that you create, what it can do is stimulate you. It's a therapy for you to create when when you are frustrated. If you paint, paint. If you draw, draw. If you can build with your hands, build something with your hands. But do something creative, you know, because anybody can tear up something. You know what I mean? It takes a real, real um, skillful, talented person to build something. So, you know, it's, it's really about channeling our energy in the right way. You know what I mean? Uh, and and that's, what, that's my message. Because that's what I did. And uh, look where it got me. Thank you. Wow. Big words right there. In, in the movie, like when you started writing screenplays and stuff, did you ever think that it was going to become what it's become? Uh, I was hoping and dreaming and wishing, but you know, of course you never know. You never know the journey or the path that God has you on. You just got to take the first step and the second step and the third step. You know, it's all about how much determination you got. You know what I mean? No does not mean no. You know what I mean? No means go around. You know what I mean? That's all it means. Go around. So, you know, don't take no for an answer. Believe in yourself. Believe in your talent. I don't care how young or old you are. You know what I mean? Don't let nobody tell you what you know you can do. You know what I'm saying? So just uh, go for it. That's how I say it. And real talk, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You look back later on and be like, what if, what if? Well, guess what? You won't know because you didn't try it. Go ahead. Stand up. All right. Great movie, guys. Uh, Thank like, you. The question, the writing process, I mean, you know, near the end when the plot was building, did you want a smooth purpose? Did you want to put in the movie the beef with EPD and Drex? Or I just want to know what the writing process was like. Oh, man. He, he wants to know what the, what the writing process was. And did we purposely exclude the beef between Easy and Dre? Do you know our first cut was three hours and 30 minutes long? <laughs> you guys wouldn't be sitting here if we was three hours in. You would have walked out probably. We, you know, it's such an amazing story with five characters over 10 years. There's no way you can get every single moment in the movie. I had to cherry pick, we had to cherry pick and pick the best moments that would serve the overall narrative and the theme. Which is brotherhood and courage tragedy, triumph, rags, riches, and I, I, I feel like we did the best we could, and I think we did a good job. It's arguably, I think, one of my best films, and <clears throat> there's a director's cut coming out. Yeah. Uh, dude, self was plugged, there you go. <laughs> no, but, no, but, but basically, I think we did the best we could given all the information. I gotta tell you, just being the OG here, I don't think you missed the thing. I thought you guys depicted the movie perfectly, got every angle in. I don't think anybody missed anything in that film. If anything, everybody walked away with a, damn, that's a good movie. Yes, go ahead. So, congratulations for the movie. Thank Amazing. you. Amazing, great story. Um, I grew up in Medellin, Colombia. Oh, wow. I would listen to you guys even though I didn't understand a word. <laughs> That's right. There you go. You can read it. I go back a lot, and it brings me a lot of memories, good and bad. Do you ever go back to the hood? All the time, you know. I mean, most of my people are still, you know, right there where we grew up, you know. So, you know, 
all the time, you know, I think you can't remove yourself from where you come from. You know, if you do, you're really gonna lose a lot of who you are. And um, so I think you gotta go back and, you know, share what you can. You can't help everybody. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, don't change who you are. Because if you was living there, you'd tell half of them to get out your face. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's like the ones that's down with you, you know, you know, the ones that's not, you just say, keep it moving, baby. I remember when, you know, when I, I wasn't having it like that. You know, you would treat me bad. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's really all about just being yourself and knowing who you are. Sure. Of course we go back. And, and and we we've done it quite a bit. With Friday, I shot that on the block that I grew up on. My very first movie, I went and shot that on the block I grew up on. And we went back to Compton to shoot straight out of Compton and South Central. So we brought the project, we brought um, everything back to the hood. Not only just hanging out, but also business and everything else. I remember your neighbors coming over to you, your old neighbors saying. <laughs> Gary, why you bring all them damn trucks on our block? Oh shit, they walking all on my grass. <laughs> all these lights and generators. Yeah, this is bad as hell, Gary, after a while. It wore off for about five days, and then they start coming around me. I ain't about to stand down here for this shit. That's, that's a hood for you, man. That's a hood for you. Got a couple of questions. Got a lot of questions, about the fact. Go ahead. Stand, stand up, mama. Hi, Hello. Gary, how you? Hey, what's going on? How you doing? Welcome. Hey, It, it would mean the world, you know. I've been uh, I've been watching his career all my life, waiting for that, you know. And it's it, it's really something that I, I dream about, and I, I really do want. And once it do happen, you know, uh, Kobe don't want one championship, you know. You gotta keep it going. So uh, I'm ready to get that first one, so we can have a whole new branch of a career to go. <laughs> Me, uh, the people of my Oscar, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for a lot of applause for that one right And that's for real. That's for real. It's, it's really about the people coming up to me, telling me they love the movie. That's how I know I got a good movie. Not how much it made, but how many times can you watch it? You know what I mean? That's how I know I got a good movie. Huh? So, you know, they can do what they want to do. I know what we got. The fans know what we got. And that's good enough for me. We talked about it. We talked, it, we talked about it today on the way over here, actually. We said that we did our best. We killed ourselves making this movie. It was a very difficult movie to make. And we felt like we really hit the mark with it. And so when they started telling us about tracking how well it may do and how we said, we don't even want to hear that. We deliver our hearts and our souls. It's on the screen. And regardless of what it does, as long as our fans love it, we good. That's what they say. Do what you love. Everything will come in time. Do what That's you right. love. Yeah, Put your heart in it. We know some people going to see it on bootleg. So we know that. <laughs> as long as they like it when they see it on bootleg. You know what I mean? Y'all better not bootleg my bootleg. <laughs> hey, I can tell you this. It ain't going to get bootleg with this crowd because I saw the big ass bouncers coming around. <laughs> All right, let me go. Uh, let me go to this side. Young lady waving her hand side to side. Go ahead. Uh, I don't think the movie has anything to do with what the police do to us. You know, I think as a community, we really need to protect ourselves by, you know, we got to make sure we make it home. You know what I mean? We got to do everything to make sure we make it home. 
or we encounter the police. So we got to do whatever it takes. You know, sometimes that is to comply. Man, what you want? Do your job, man. Just write the ticket, write the ticket, man. You know what I'm saying? Want me to step out the car, step out the goddamn car. What you want me to do? You know what I'm saying? As long as you don't shoot me, as long as I don't give you no reason to tase me, throw me on the ground, don't give them a reason to put their hands on you. That's what we need to do and figure it out and be smart. You know, uh, because you're not going to win out there on the streets. They can, they, you, you know, you're just not going to, you know, you start talking about the Constitution and shit, and he start macing you in the face. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, just wait and get them in court, but make it to court. You know, that's the key now. Make it to court, make it home, make sure they don't hurt you, and that's the key. You know, make sure they don't put their hands on you. Do whatever it takes to, you know, hurry up and finish dealing with them as fast as possible. All right, we got time for three more. I'm gonna take the uh, young lady in the yellow shirt. Then I'm going to the guy in the white over here with a hat on. Go ahead. I mean, I was hurt, you know what I mean? I was real hurt. Um, you know, easy to be real just really wasn't a big a big uh, advocate of safe sex. You know what I'm saying? It was a time when, you know, people was just really uh, going to buy condoms on a regular, you know what I mean? You know, it was like the 70s going into the 80s and then the 80s going into the 90s, so you know, he, he just wasn't big on it. And we we used to talk to him about it. You know what I'm saying? We used to talk to him about trying to be safe, but you know, it, it, it just takes one time with the wrong person. So, you know, it could happen to anybody. Um, you know, I, I was very educated on it, you know, before it happened to him. Uh, and, you know, it just hurt me that, you know, somebody so, strong was taken down, you know, by, you know, a, a four-letter disease or whatever, you know, four-initial disease or, or whatever it is, you know, it was just, it just wasn't fair to me. And um, and we should all learn from that in some way, somehow. The film was absolutely educational. Not only is it a history lesson, but it, it shows you, hey, this could happen. Uh, yes, sir. Hi, great movie. Really loved it. Thank you. Yeah, I'm always showing up to the studio, man. You know what I mean? It's like you never hear about a project not not happening because Ice Cube didn't show up. You know? <laughs> so I'm gonna always show up. I always got a hot 16, ready to go, ready to get on the mic, ready to spit. Nice experience. All right, the gentleman right there with the NWA hat on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, we trying to we trying to put something together, you know. Hopefully, the promoters here, you know, radio station or somebody. Is ready. Hey, I'll put up the mic. I'll do it. I mean, damn, I'm ready. We ready, you know. We ready to to get down. We got a lot of music to do, and and uh, you know. But right now, it's all about August 14th. It's all about straight out of county. Yes, right. If you, if you like this movie, please uh, tweet. Instagram, whatever Snapchat or whatever they got out there, let them know that's, that they got to see straight out of Compton. And one more thing, if you didn't like the movie, you can kill yourself on the way out. <laughs> August 14th, tell your friends, tweet about it tonight. Tell everybody. Once again, Miami, give it up for straight out of Compton! Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.